Yo, what up? Josh Rubin from Useful Sailing Performance. Today I want to talk about pregnancy and difficulties with pregnancy. Now, of course, I'm not here to give you all the answers, but the bottom line is this. When we're pregnant, you know, we have to think about what we need to do to our bodies to make sure we're in a homeostatic state. So when we do get pregnant, we can actually support the fetus. And there's certain things you need to think about when it comes to food, of course, emotional stress, physical stress. But there's certain foods that are very important for the fetus. One of them especially is glycogen or sugar or carbohydrates, the right type. Because the embryo actually converts your glucose into fructose to actually help with organ growth and metabolic rate. Same thing with progesterone estrogen ratio. Progesterone is actually progestation. So we need to think about foods that are actually high in progesterone-like qualities like dairy. Because progesterone brings nutrients and oxygen to the fetus. Where estrogen, if it's unopposed, pulls oxygen and nutrients away from your organs. That's why a lot of women get cramps. That's why a lot of women get uh, morning sickness infertility, miscarriages, etc. So it actually prevents the growth of the fetus and actually can lead to low birth weight and brain size. We have to think about protein. Protein is super important because it actually helps with albumin levels and I'll talk about that. It actually helps with blood volume as well as salt um, because when we're pregnant, uh, meaning females, not me, your blood volume increases by 40%. And this is important for the development and growth of the fetus metabolic rate and the development and support of your body. So you have to think about that because if we're, if we're deficient in protein, this can actually lead to a sodium deficiency. So low protein diet during pregnancy, now you're saying, well, how much protein should I eat? I think it's person dependent, to be honest with you. I'm not going to sit here and say have 100 grams of protein. That's actually not enough when you're pregnant. Um, but a low protein diet is very detrimental to your health when you're pregnant. It can lead to eclampsia, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, morning sickness, and miscarriages. So if we have a low protein diet, we can end up with a lot of B deficiencies or B vitamin deficiencies and especially vitamin A deficiencies, which are super important because vitamin A is actually dependent for the production of pregnenolone, which is dependent for the production of your steroidal hormones, but also for the production of thyroid hormone. So if you're vitamin A deficient, you're right there going to have an inhibition of thyroid hormone. Low protein diets actually impair the liver's ability to store glycogen, which is super important when you're not pregnant and when you're pregnant. At the same time, it impairs the liver's ability to actually inactivate estrogen and insulin. And hyperinsulinemia is quite inflammatory. And being excess in estrogen or having it unopposed is very damaging to the liver, the body, etc. It's been shown that when women have morning sickness, they actually are having spasming of the bile duct to the small intestine. And it's actually due to estrogen excess or the body's ability to detoxify or eliminate estrogen. And that's what's leading to the morning sickness. At the same time, low protein diets and high estrogen in this scenario actually cause the body's ability or the blood's ability to increase in clotting. And this has been shown why a lot of women will have seizures or eclampsia when they're pregnant. High estrogen actually destroys the liver's ability or destroys the liver's ability to produce albumin. Now, albumin is a major protein in the blood. It's produced by the liver. It's important for the transportation of hormones, the, um, the role in water distribution, etc. That's why you'll see it high on people's blood labs when they're actually dehydrated. So it's actually important to looking at liver and digestive health in the body, but also estrogen in itself. Because of albumin levels, um, estrogen itself actually affects albumin levels. Because estrogen, when it's dominant or opposed, you're not detoxifying it, it's going to pull albumin from the blood and push it into the tissues, which can lead to edema and swelling and inflammation, ischemia, lack of oxygen, etc. It actually pushes your cells towards um, converting glycogen into lactic acid instead of carbon dioxide, which is highly inflammatory. And your cells hold on to calcium, which is even more inflammatory because you lose sodium. And I'll talk more about that. So any type of stress, oxidative stress, etc., will affect albumin. Well, this is dangerous because albumin in the blood, calcium, magnesium, most of it, not all of it, is actually bound to albumin. So if you're pulling albumin out of the blood, you actually pull calcium and magnesium, and those are dependent. Magnesium is actually dependent for calcium absorption, or I should say calcium is dependent for magne magnesium absorption, but you actually need both. And it's more important to have the magnesium because it synthesizes with progesterone to regulate blood sugar, relax the muscles, absorb calcium, and lead to um, increased metabolic rate. And it actually decreases the body's ability to lose uh, sodium in the urine. So in this state, we keep going. We end up basically having a hypothyroid condition because we're impairing the liver's ability to detox estrogen, which blocks T4 to T3 conversion. And at the same time, in hypothyroidism, like I talked about, we end up losing sodium in the blood. And this is a detrimental to our health when we're pregnant because sodium regulates blood volume. 
and we need that blood volume when we're pregnant to actually prevent eclampsia, morning sickness, infertility, all these different things, but to actually help the fetus grow and support the fetus through blood, blood um, um, through the uh, connection stalk or umbilical cord, etc. So this loss of sodium will actually cause edema and actually causes decrease in uh, blood volume. And this is very dangerous for women when they're pregnant. And this is, you know, a lot of women get swollen when they're pregnant. You're actually not supposed to get swollen if you're actually regulating sodium and you're not in a hypothyroid state. At the same time, this decreased blood volume actually increased circulation, like I talked about, which can lead to high blood pressure or eclampsia. And you see this in pregnancy, and what do people do? Or doctors do, they tell you to not eat salt, but the very thing you actually need is the right type of salt in your diet to regulate blood volume, kind of decrease the viscosity of the blood, downregulate estrogen, allow the cells to hold on to sodium, etc., 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 will actually lower your blood pressure. So the very thing they're doing, diuretics and decreasing salt, is actually going to perpetuate the problem and increase edema. Now at this point, with decreased circulation and everything that's going on, we have blood sugar handling issues and hypoglycemia. Cortisol rises, which catabolizes bone, catabolizes muscle, etc. It leads to the mobilization of free fatty acids in the blood. It actually can lead to maybe premature labor, eclampsia, and so forth. Or not having a pregnancy that is fun in a sense, when you're throwing up all the time, or not feeling good, or you're swollen all the time. At the same time, high estrogens, like I talked about, create the thickness in the blood, and they actually can lead to even more hypoglycemia, more blood clotting, Possibly seizures. We've seen this with clients when they go to have a baby. They'll actually have seizures. It's actually due to this condition of being high estrogen. It's not being detoxed. High blood vis viscosity. Um, decreased sodium retention and so forth. So we have to think about these things. Now what do you do? Now I just went through a huge physiological thing. The bottom line is you don't detoxify estrogen. It can lead to a lot of these dysfunctions. Morning sickness, etc. Edema, decreased blood volume, calcium and magnesium deficiency, hypoglycemia, hypothyroidism. So what do you do? Well... According to Dr. Brewer and according to Ray Pete um, and Broda Barnes, especially Dr. Brewer, some of the most important things you should be eating when you're pregnant are dairy, lots of dairy, eggs, white fish, and lots of fruits. Um, those are probably the most important things that you should be eating to regulate blood sugar, help with blood volume, um, help the liver detoxify estrogen, and help with the metabolic efficiency of the fetus and your metabolic efficiency. Because you want to go through this pregnancy and feel good, but come out of it and rebound faster than most people. So hopefully you've enjoyed this and maybe have some understanding on why you're having some issues with your pregnancy and some basic things that you need to do to actually help the body detoxify this, like eating the right types of protein to help the liver detoxify estrogen. You can actually use bamboo shoots or carrots, no more than one of each per day to help the absorption of toxins and estrogen in the small intestine. You can hydrate with uh, orange salty type of fruit juices like orange juice and salt, maybe adding some honey, adding some honey to your tea with salt to actually help regulate blood pressure and increase blood volume and increase the body's ability to inactivate estrogen. So hopefully you've enjoyed this clip. 